Hey guys, Trent here coming at you with another video. So we'll look at a few sales, of course, but I uh, got a question. Uh, who handles return shipping whenever somebody wants to return an item on eBay? Let's talk about it. So if you're new to my channel, welcome in. My name is Trent. I'm a part-time reseller on eBay. I do it for fun and profit, and I take you along for the journey. So please hit that subscribe button for more great videos in the future. Uh, so Alex Ryder, thanks for your question. He says, or he asks, uh, whenever you get a return on eBay, who pays for the return shipping, the buyer or the, the seller? Okay. That all depends, Alex. It's a very good question, though. And I answered your question, uh, and to be honest, I wasn't sure if you were asking uh, what, how does it work, or if you were just asking what I do. And the reason I say that is because uh, there is the option of free returns on eBay now. So anyways, let's break it down. So first off, if you don't offer free returns, but you just are opted into the regular uh, eBay return policy, uh, you know, 30 day return, 60 day, whatever it is, uh, under the normal circumstances, if a buyer just wants to return an item, let's say just because they changed their mind or they don't like it, doesn't fit, doesn't fit them, uh, they are responsible for paying the return shipping. So if they wanted, let's say they just didn't like the item, changed their mind, they want to return it to you. Uh, they'll have to pay the return of the shipping, and then whenever you receive it in the you know the condition and everything that the that you sent it to them, them in you would refund them uh, their original purchase price and uh, their original shipping. So either way, you will be out some shipping because you got to refund their original shipping back to them. Uh, a lot of people offer free shipping, so that really doesn't apply. You're basically offer you're basically refunding them all their money in the same fashion as you would. So in regards to refunds on returns, you don't, generally speaking, don't get a break by breaking up your item into, uh, you know, sale price and shipping because you're supposed to refund uh, the buyer their original shipping as well. So if you're not opted into free returns, that's how the normal return policy would go. Now, here's a little inside tip. Uh, if you're new to selling on eBay and you're trying to figure out, should I offer free returns? Should I just go regular returns, offer no returns? You should offer free returns and I'll, I'll explain to you why, but let's back up a little bit. Let's just talk about regular returns. Let's just say you offer regular returns. Uh, and also I'll mention real quick, you should, shouldn't should bother to not offer returns because what I'm about to tell you is the reason why. The buyer, if you don't offer returns or if you offer returns but they're paid returns where the buyer has to pay the return shipping, they're just going to select something like item not as described or item defective or something like that. And if they select that, that is all they have to do to make it to where you have to pay the return shipping as well as the, the uh, seller. So in theory, any savvy eBay buyer knows that they get free returns on any item that they want at any time because they're covered by eBay's money back guarantee policy. So all they gotta do is say item not as described. They don't have to justify it. They have to have provide no proof and they will be able to 100% you know, return that item to you and you will, you, know, you will be responsible for paying the return shipping and everything. So that's why really you should just offer free returns most of the time on, on, on most of your items. But anyways, let's talk about free returns. So I offer free returns on most of my items. Uh, there's a few reasons to do that. One, for the reason I just said, the buyer's gonna find a way to return it for free anyways. So you might as well just go ahead and offer free returns because you get a 10% discount on your final value fees for every item that you sell that had free return policy on it. It's called top rated plus status. Also, you get the top rated plus little insignia on your listing, and I'm assuming the listing gets treated differently if it's a top rated plus listing as opposed to a non top rated plus listing. So you get some benefits from offering that free returns. If you're a bread and butter items seller like me, uh, thrift stores, flea markets, yard sales, uh, and you're doing your due diligence and doing things correctly whenever you're listing items, providing some descri uh, description, taking a lot of photographs, and if you're doing clothes, providing measurements and stuff like that, you're not gonna get that many returns anyways, in my opinion, or at least I don't. I would say I only get a return every couple hundred items maybe. 
However, I don't deal with as much clothes as I used to. If you do strictly clothes and shoes, you're gonna probably get a lot more returns. Not a lot more, but you'll get more than one, one every couple hundred items like I do. When I used to sell more clothes, I might get maybe two re two returns out of a hundred or something like that. It still was pretty, you know, pretty good because I always uh, measured the the clothes. You know, the if it was a shirt, measure the chest, the length. You guys know what I'm talking about. Anyway, so again, Alex Ryder, to answer your question, for me personally, I offer free returns on almost everything. I am gonna amend that a little bit in the future. And that is for a category that I've noticed that's starting to give me a little bit of trouble, or it kind of does. And that is whenever you list an item uh, in the in the uh, condition description of not working for parts or repair. I've noticed that new buyers hardly ever notice that. They don't ever pay attention to the fact that it's being listed as not working for parts or repair. So I'm thinking in the future I need to be sure and I'm not going to offer free returns at least and try to prevent some of that from, so, you know, from me paying for some returns. Hopefully. Again, the buyer could find a way, but what I think sh should happen, I think eBay needs to make it that if you list an item for, you know, not working for parts in the condition, when the buyer goes to buy that, they should have to click on a, some kind of, there should be some kind of disclaimer that pops up and they have to acknowledge that they understand that they're purchasing an item that is listed as not working for parts or repair only. Uh, but they don't have anything like that. So the buyer, unless they see that little not working for parts or repair, as far as I know, that's the only one little line that can kind of give them the clues other than your descript condition description. And we all know buyers a lot of times don't read all that stuff. So... For my items like that in the future, uh, I just sold an Xbox lot that I think I'm gonna get, they're gonna try to return it, I think, because it's in the middle of transit right now being shipped, and they're already messaging me saying, oh, the Xbox, does the Xbox work? Because they're just now probably reading the listing and realizing it was like a zero or one feedbacker. Actually, I think they're a one feedbacker because I gave them a feedback. And they're just now saying, uh, they're just now realizing that they purchased uh, this Xbox a lot that was uh, untested for parts or uh, not working. So I'll look forward to dealing with that transaction in the future, maybe. But in summary, Alex, uh, yeah, uh, normal, if you don't offer free returns on eBay, uh, return shipping is supposed to be on the buyer if they just want to return it for buyer's remorse, uh, doesn't fit them right, or whatever the case may be. But if it's because of a mis if they're returning it because of a mistake you made, then it doesn't matter that then you have to pay the return shipping. Like if it if they claim that it was not as described, or if they claimed it was damaged or or something like that. And then once again, those same principles apply even if you don't offer returns at all. They can still open a case as not, not you know item not as described, and you don't want that. So you definitely want to offer returns of some kind and you might as well offer free returns unless it's a category that has a features a lot of returns or something like that that might be an exception otherwise just go with the free return policy and the 10 percent discount on your final value fees is far going to outweigh the uh, few returns you may have to pay the return shipping on so i hope that helps out okay i sold from my lot of avon stuff uh i've sold most of it now uh, for five bucks i got a box of Avon vintage like old bottles and stuff from a garage sale uh, sold a big lot of it and then a couple individual items and this is one of the individual items it's some uh, Avon uh, oh what's it called elusive beauty dust country garden uh, this sold total price paid by the customer ten dollars and eighty three cents and I think I'm gonna have to put this in a pad it in uh, the reason why I want to do that is to keep the lid down on it. Hopefully they don't spill it whenever they open it up. That'll keep the lid intact. I'm going to throw it in one of my 6x4 uh, one of my 6x4x4 uh, by four by four inches box. Ooh, 
this actually comes out over a pound, so yeah, I, I miscalculated on this thing. I'm probably going to just barely break even or barely make any profit on this, this guy because I'm going to have to go probably priority mail. Oh well. Alright, in my last video, uh, I said I was going to list up this K-Bar uh, last ditch effort knife. <laughs> uh, Steve, a frequent viewer and uh, has bought a few things from me before. Um, saw me show that knife off in uh, my last video and decided to pick it up from my store. So Steve, I really appreciate it. Yeah, uh, it's just a little, uh, they call it a last ditch effort. Yeah, it's a little boot knife or necklace knife, a little last resort knife made by K-Bar, a brand known for making military knives. And it's got this really uh, protective sheath. I guess you could, uh, Use it for a tactical letter opener, Steve, if you wanted to. <laughs> so Steve was uh, kind enough to go ahead and buy this from me full price. $20.91 is what it came out to. So once again, Steve, I appreciate the support. I'll just throw it in another one of these 6x4x4 uh, four four boxes. I'm just gonna do that since it's a knife. I mean, you could probably just put it straight up in this pad in here, but uh, I don't know. It's a blade. It is a blade, so I guess it doesn't hurt to be extra cautious. So I just got it. I'm just gonna roll it up in there, Steve. Put it in this box. That's still gonna be only a four ounce shipment, so nice. Uh, and then I sold this uh, flashback Sega Genesis game, my spare copy. Uh, I got a complete with manual copy for my collection. Uh, this is a pretty cool game. I remember it from back in the day. So total price paid by the customer, $17.35. So let's throw that in a padded going to be a six ouncer. All right, here's an interesting one. Uh, this is a sealed board game I bought from the thrift store. Oh man, it might have been a couple years ago at this point. Nightclub. <laughs> More than just a game, it's a lifestyle. Yeah, I saw that at the thrift store, you know, sealed. I'm like, yeah, this seems kind of uncommon. Uh, yeah, you know, there's got to be people out there that actually want it, though. That's the issue. <laughs> but it looks like it finally sold. Uh, not for a lot of money. $24.37 total paid by the customer. I'm uh, just happy to get it out of here at this point. Uh, I have no idea. I don't remember what I paid for it. But I think I'll be in the profit a little bit. Not much, though. Going to do some uh, Frankensteining of some priority mail mailing boxes. So I crop off the... Uh, you know, these mailing boxes have, you know, the sticky stuff on each side to where you don't need the adhesive. So when I Frankenstein them, I just, I crop off the ends of two boxes. Because I only want the adhesive part on on uh, one side of each, each of them. This stuff is not cutting good like I normally stuff wasn't cutting as good as I normally like. So then I prep one side. Like that. And then we'll seat the nightclub game in there. other one on there and now I can put it down just to where it's the perfect length which is right there so now it really doesn't have much movement to it and put it flat on the deck like this to where you can make the seams 
nice, you know, like that, like that. And we'll just put a little tape to get it, make sure it stays where I want it to be. And then once you've got that, then you just tape, tape it a whole bunch. At least that's what I do. You could use a, they call it a, I think they used to call it a board game box, but it's a, basically a large flat rate mailer, but the long, elongated kind like this, uh, it's like 17 bucks. I'm, I'm guessing it'll be cheaper than that to do it this way, priority mail. But if you didn't want to Frankenstein it and you wanted to ship a board game, pay a couple extra bucks and just use the large flat rate mailer, the game board version, which, you know, it's about this long or something like that. It's gonna be a four pounder. Got on eBay and started looking at Sega Master System and I bid on a, a lot of two games in one for like, oh, around 15 bucks. I got these two Sega Master System games, Choplifter and Thunderblade. <sighs> so now this is my Sega Master System stack that I had before. So I had these two games to it. I want to collect for the Master System as well as, you know, obviously Sega Genesis, original Nintendo, stuff like that. Sometime soon here, I'm going to list, uh, here's just a box for OutRun 2019 I'm going to list up. I, I didn't end up listing in the NFL Football 94 by itself. I put it in a lot. I, I listed a game lot for about 30, 40, uh, about 40 bucks I'm trying to get for five games, NFL 94, Jungle Strike, Echo, Sonic, and Desert Strike. These are all, of course, duplicates. If you're new to my channel, you may not have seen me show off my toys uh, recently. Uh, my wife picked up that Stormtrooper uh, in my last video with my uh, Nerf, so. I didn't feel like rearranging Darth Vader's head and putting the other stormtrooper over here, but he should be over there. And I got my uh, Aliens collection, Kenner Aliens from the 90s. One of my favorite franchises uh, for movies and toys. I had some of the toys when I was a kid, but these Dick Tracy toys are my original toys, except for the ones I used to complete my collection, or I bought to complete my collection, including the original cars that I got for, I think, Christmas and and all that stuff back in the day and a couple about a month or two ago right at the start of the COVID crisis I went to Walmart and got these lantern alien toys last Christmas I got the Star Wars Rogue One from my wife she picked it up uh, I don't know where uh, Rogue One AT, AT ACT and I told the story recently, I've been picking up these Godzilla toys, NECA Godzilla, NECA Godzilla at uh, Rite Aid, in my local Rite Aid, it was kind of crazy. Kenshiro is a character from a anime called Fist of the North Star. And I first saw the anime movie Fist of the North Star when I was a, a kid. And it is ultra violent, like he punches people and does like pressure points on them and their heads like literally explode so if you can imagine a cartoon with just like blood like literally heads exploding and blood just gushing and spurting everywhere fist of the north star check it out and then yeah once again alien the alien franchise is one of my favorite franchises uh, so i got random odd, odds and ends alien stuff but the uh, i decided to go in on the alien resurrection toys because they're cheaper and I could get the whole, pretty much the whole set. There's some other things that go with this line, but for these, this size box of these size figures, I got the, all six of them. And here's my little, uh, picked up at a yard sale. The, I have the box for it too. Queen takes Bishop. Little, uh, mini display there. Ninja Turtles, I collect them whenever I can find them. I got Donatello. This is actually a first edition Donatello because the head is rubber. If you pick up a vintage Ninja Turtle and the head is a squishy rubber instead of uh, 
the non-vintage or not the non-vintage but the non-first edition after the first release of them they had hard plastic heads so here's a vintage leonardo but this donatello has a squishy rubber head so that's like the, the more collectible one then i got Raphael over here and the rat king that's pretty much all the ninja turtles i have one of the first toy lines i remember as a kid i was really little was he-man masters of the universe these are when they remade them for adults masters of the universe classics and uh these things we actually around 2012 2013 era i went into my local rite aid and they had these there for ten dollars a piece and i bought a bunch of these orcos a bunch of these molar versus skeletors and a bunch of these megators this is what i'm down to later i bought this on ebay buzzsaw hordak but i was selling these in 2013 for like 30 bucks a piece which now this orco right here is probably a hundred bucks on ebay molar versus skeletor probably at least 60 and megator probably like 40 but uh boy wish i wouldn't have sold those off. that was when i was first starting ebay though so i was looking for stuff i'm like wow this is great i can get these masters of the universe classics toys for 10 bucks and sell them for 30 it's it's awesome retail arbitrage right yeah if i could take it all back i would have hung on to them because i would have made a huge profit all right guys well that's gonna do it for this video i hope you enjoyed please like comment and subscribe let me know about any interesting ebay tips tricks finds or leave a comment down in the comment section to say hi or ideas for videos are great in the comment section or uh questions comments and concerns are great down in the comment section so i hope you enjoyed the video and have a good one